quality and looks up. <laughs> you gotta have that. Hi folks, I'm Jonathan Wilson with Guitar Vials Inc, otherwise known as Toga Man Guitars, and i um, over here at Eisler's uh, studio, and Eisler, for those who don't know, is uh, a film composer, and he does, in fact, use a lot of guitars here, um, including the guitar vial. And his latest uh, project is uh, the uh, ABC series Revenge, uh, and he's also done some other uh, uh, films that have begun over uh, really well at Sundance and South by Southwest leading up to this. Anyway, Eisler, thank you so much for having me over. And, uh, Nice to have you for your moments. Um, I'd like to probably just go, we'll go into just for some of our viewers here, just a few of the standard questions. How did you get into this? Being a band, younger, rocking out, <laughs> finding out that uh, doing this is, is kind of cool too? Or? Right. Uh, well, I mean, if by this you mean film scoring, it was a pretty yes. roundabout route, really. Because mm -hmm. it definitely started with bands. I, I came very close to studying music at Middlesex College in. in uh, in London, and then I discovered that um, going on the road with a band was a lot more fun. So, mm -hmm. I, so I ended up doing that. I, I ended up uh, playing with a, a lot of different bands, mm -hmm. and and uh, it led to a gig with uh, with a guy called Robbie Williams, who's like an English pop star, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a pop star everywhere, but everywhere but here in America, pretty much. And uh, and I went on the road with him as a guitarist and a bass player, and you know I did that seemingly forever. And I was playing sessions. You know, doing guitar and all that stuff, um, and then I, after I left this band, I moved to New York for a little mm -hmm. bit, and then moved to LA. And I think it's inevitable once you move here, isn't it? It's, it's funnily enough, you know, I met uh, I met a, a good friend of mine who I hadn't seen in a, in a while. I, I bumped into him recently. Um, he's actually used to be my manager, mm -hmm. and I remember him saying to me. You know, it's great that you're doing so well at this film stuff. But uh, ten years ago, I remember you saying, "Get me a film, get me a film," and me saying, "Oh, one step at a time, lad. Stick <laughs> with the band thing." And I don't remember that at all. And then, you know, that week actually, a bunch of other friends said similar things to me. Said that you know, you were always going to do a film or something. And it, I don't really remember it that way. I remember coming here and meeting some music supervisors, mm -hmm. giving them some of my music, and, and eventually, then you know, songs ending up in films and then I got asked to score a documentary Christ knows why because I had no idea how to do it mm -hmm. they just said hey, do you want to make music for this film I was like <laughs> yeah sure went home and panicked yeah and uh, and figured it out you know and then over time I just got asked to do more and more stuff and and um, and I think the big one of the big breaks for me was the Sundance Composers Lab that really helped a lot um, you know, it's an amazing program basically I ended up there for two weeks and got to know a lot of people that are in the in the business since then and you know and here you go yeah so from Marshall stacks to uh, conducting batons right yeah there's a lot of, it's funny because conducting is something I fell in love with through again it was it, it came right after the the Sundance thing uh, I got into BMI's uh, conducting class and and did a couple of weeks with Lucas Richmond, who's, a, who's an, you know, an amazing teacher, and just really fell in love with it, because I think the one thing I missed scoring movies was playing live. Um, yeah. And uh, there's, a, there's a sort of some sort of correlation to that. It's, it's not exactly performance, but it's, it's, being, it's interacting with live musicians, and, and, you know, and I'm lucky enough on this show that I get to work with an orchestra every week, and right. for me, it's, that's kind of the fun part of it, because if it was all just sort of sitting in this cave, you know, nice though it is, it would it would kind of drive me postal, I think. So, <clears throat> so yeah. you know, so being being able to interact with real players every week uh, and getting to do that is is probably the highlight of my my week every week. You know. Yeah, well, I'd imagine it would be a little less awkward than learning dance steps or something like that, but maybe not too much. much. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. this way, but you know, the first thing I ever had to do in Lucas's class was get up and conduct two piano players. Right. And you'd be shocked at how much of a train wreck that can be if you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and uh, and I, I proved that it was it wow. was absolutely horrific. But uh, but you know, it, it's you, you learn. And so you uh, you got um, into uh, string uh, instruments and music. Mm -hmm. How did that uh, process? Well, funnily enough, uh, you're a bit of a part of that as it happens. But it, it, round at, at um, when I was at the Sundance Labs, one of our 
sort of mentors there was Tyler Bates who I've since become very mm-hmm. good friends with and I remember coming to that sort of two week stint and thinking okay well there's certain things that, so certain tools I'm really missing <clears throat> you know there were people there who worked with samples there were people there who worked with live instruments and I was very much a guitar player so I dragged my guitar and my pedal board up there thinking right well if all else fails I can I know I can deal with that yeah uh, but you know, as a guitar player, what you're really missing is long notes. You need them long mm-hmm. notes when you film yeah. stuff, man. So you know, so what do you have? An Ebo or you know, bowed guitar is kind of you've got the out to the toppy mm-hmm. and the bottomy, and that's kind of it. And in the middle, you just got a whole lot of nasty scraping. Oh. And and anyway, so one night after working, we're having a beer in the, at the bar down there, and, and Tyler just it was like we talked about something else. I can't remember. Blah 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 blah. Guitar viol. And I just went, well, what did you just say? He went, yeah, guitar viol. It's like a bowed uh, electric. I was like, give me the website. Give me the fucking website right now. <laughs> um, and that's how I got to, to hear about guitar viols because it was a great way for me to start, you know, getting into that world. Yeah. But around the same time, I was studying a lot and, and uh, you know, started studying string arranging a little bit and, and, uh, and orchestration and stuff. So I kind of yeah. gradually fell into it. And that could be kind of probably challenging, I'd imagine, because when you're layering a lot of tracks and parts, it's like you could probably just go way too nuts or just put just enough kind of thing, I'd imagine. Sure. Yeah, I mean, especially if it's an instrument you're familiar with, it's, you know, I think a good lesson for me was what, at some recording session way back in the, mm-hmm. ooh, this is the time somewhere, somebody saying, you know, how about we just have one idea instead of 10 right. great ideas on top of each other, you know, think of one good one and stick with that. Wow. Well, uh, so you've got, let's see, I, I wanted to grab Nadia yeah, 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 for just right. a second. I'm going to duck for all of you watching. And uh, Naughty Chuck was sort of a one of a kind. It, um, I can't believe I've got something called Naughty Chuck in my house for a start. But. Yeah, well, you know, it, uh, it's, it's fun when it's got a story behind it, and now it's become it somewhat does. legendary in, in some of your work now. People don't know that they're hearing Naughty Chuck, but uh, Naughty Chuck had a big knot right here, and I just thought, well, gee, it could still make a wonderful instrument. Why don't we just cut this thing? And and so, um, you know, living in Southern California with all the Trader Joes around, and you know, uh, there's the uh, Naughty Chuck. These are actually Cedar Ridge, I guess, but they're um, you know wine knobs. Actually, these are custom wine cork knobs, and they've got a cork in there, and. You know, it just seems kind of random, but it was sort of fun with the, you know, Cabernet. You'll tell them the, the Chuck part, though. The Chuck part, right. Right. But uh, it could be uh, one of, you know, many things. So this was sort of a snapshot of an era when I was building exclusively these type of instruments and then right. eventually going to acoustics and stuff. But anyway, this is Naughty Chuck. And Naughty Chuck is played with a bow. <laughs> on a good day. On a good day. Or or not, you can pluck it. Um, well, anyway, yeah, it's, uh, so um, since uh, the Sundance uh, events, and you also, I understand, got uh, best score at South by South. I mean, I can't keep up with all these little awards <laughs> you've been getting. It's, that's been recent, actually, but I, I did a movie. Um, well, we've had, a, we've had a couple, actually. There's... Um, there's a movie I did called Natural Selection, which is mm-hmm. a great little film, and, and I did it with my friend Kurt Schneider, mm-hmm. who also mixes all my scores, and uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, we got we got best score at South by Southwest wow. for that, which was great. The, the best part of it was was that being, you know, it just kind of shows how much I'm just sort of cut off from the world in this little cave, but basically, I got a phone call, I don't know, about, about midnight. Like, you know, I was working on another film, mm-hmm. and somebody goes, Congratulations, man, on uh, winning South by Southwest. And I went, You don't know what the hell you're talking about, mate. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Right. He goes, No, 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 you with Chuck Press. So I kind of Googled it, and, and it turned out like we'd won this award, which I didn't know existed until we won it. I'm kind of glad because I think I would have been, right. you know. Myself and so you uh, you uh, eventually segued or stumbled or just chain of events leading to revenge, which revenge I think had already maybe started at that, at that point. I'd done a, a couple of movies. I'd, I'd worked on uh, 
couple of TV shows I worked on the on the, the American version of Shameless, which is okay. you know, really great fun. And that was all all rock stuff. Um, <clears throat> so you know, just kind of we did it really quickly and get in there and knock out a bunch of tunes. And then I'd done on the ice, and I think uh, uh, Philip Noyce, who was the director on the pilot and the, the first episode mm -hmm. of Revenge, um, yeah, at the time they were just putting the whole thing together, and uh, I went and got introduced to them through my agents, and I, I went and met with them, and they'd heard a bunch of music from on the ice, and they really liked it. Um, so funnily enough, the, the story behind that was, I, that night I, I was sitting at mm -hmm. home, and I was trying to remember in some of the, the interview, and the, the, uh, Mike Kelly, who created the show, was saying, well, I really want like a simple piece that has something to do with this. The, the whole show is based in the Hamptons, so it's it's by the beach. Yeah. Something to do with the sea and and uh, like a simple piano melody and you know. And I, I, I went, that's you know, it's great. I walked away and I, and I got home that night and I was thinking, oh my god, I've got the exact piece he's talking about. And about two years previous to that, I think I'd done a short mm -hmm. film for a good friend of mine, and. It's guitar viol doing this kind of harmonic mm -hmm. thing, sounds right. like waves, and a piano melody. I'm like, oh my god, I've got the piece, I've got the piece. So we sent it that night, and uh, and I got hired on Monday morning, I think. Wow, that's very cool. Well, I've been actually, uh, I'm actually watching the show. Uh, oh, good. It's it's actually quite engaging. Um, right. You know, and there's not a lot of TV I like watching. Trust me, uh, you get, you know, I do get bored. I, but uh, this one's sort of engaging. It's got these it, little it twists is. and plots. And it is. I love getting the episodes every week because we, you know, me and my assistant Dave just sort of <clears> sit down and watch your stuff and we're like that. And then I forget I've actually got to write music for it or come yeah. up with something, you know. But it's, it's a it's a good show. Very effective uh, parts in there, by the way, and I've been enjoying the other oh, story. Of course, now, you know, that I've been in this business for a while, at least on a very unique angle end of it. Um, you know, now I've been really listening intently to a lot of, you know, scores. And sometimes I'll hear... Sounds like he's trying to play a guitar viol, but it's not one. You know? Right, right. <laughs> scraping some <laughs> else. I didn't scraping think. some guitar somewhere <laughs> he's got the hacks out. But uh, anyway, just so much congratulations. It's been Thank such you, a mate. thrill uh, over the last few years watching all this unfold and, and okay. um, looking forward to all your uh, future work. Yeah, likewise, mate. And uh, thank you for your time, and I'm going to let you get back to what you do best. <laughs> right, which is delivering the next episode of. Exactly, but that's uh, that's that's a good thing. That's a happy yes, thing. Yes, it is. And yeah, uh, these days, cool. especially. Oh yeah. Well, anyway. All right, man. Thank Thanks you for uh, coming on. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye, everybody.